What's going on there folks? Good afternoon. It's the Earthmaster here on the live stream with an update video on this Wednesday, June 15th date, 2022 is the year looking at about 11.32 a.m. California time. Latest quake shows some movement, a 3.0 earthquake here uh, into the Indonesia Islands area. Uh, notice some activity kicking off here off the coast of Oregon uh, into the uh, kind of looks like it's the Blanco fracture zone. Seen quite a few earthquakes this morning. Uh, let's go ahead and check out the latest activity on the USGS map here. Stand by for just a second. There we go. Uh, looking in here, um, got a pretty good swarm of activity around the Blanco fracture zone. Looks like right at the end here, right around the Juan de Fuca Ridge as well. Um, eight earthquakes so far showing up in this cluster of quakes. Uh, the largest so far, a 5.6. So I'm sure there's a lot more going on out here uh, than the 4 range. Looks like a 3.8 included in there, but I'm sure there's uh, some 2s uh, within this area. Okay, I thought I smelt smoke or something, so I'm, I'm pretty big at uh, my nose smelling abnormal stuff, so... I think we're okay. I hope. Don't want to smell smoke out there. That wouldn't be good. Don't need no more fires. Um, yeah, so watching this activity, this area did see some movement a while back. If you guys remember, it's been a few months now. Uh, I think it was earlier this year we've seen a little swarm of activity here really ramp up within this region. Um, but it's been a while. It's been quite a few months here. So eight earthquakes off the coast of Oregon. Again, this is just east or uh, west of the Cascadia subduction zone. Uh, I know it's, uh, you know, different fault systems and whatnot, right? And plate boundaries. But you got to remember uh, the, the pressure gradient as a whole. The Pacific plate is massive. And the um, Cascadia subduction zone is very small compared to that, um, compared to the plate in general, right? The Pacific plate. But there's a lot of activity. We've seen a lot of trimmer out here uh, over the past couple months along the Cascadia. And... Um, some inland earthquakes as well some kind of odd ones uh, around the mountain ranges i still think pressure is high uh, super high uh, in the cascadia subduction zone and I, just seeing this activity kind of uh, confirms my suspicion uh, let's go back i want to go into the search catalog here and um, see exactly when that uh, prior swarm was we'll go ahead and check it out real quick we'll go to 4.5 and above and we'll do uh, let's do a custom event We'll just go back over the last year and we will draw a little rectangle here on the map. Hopefully you guys can see this one. Yep, you guys can. Uh, and draw this area out because I'm kind of curious to see exactly when that was. Uh, we'll go right here and it was within this region. So let's see what we got here. Search. All right, so there's that swarm. If you notice though, let's go back, uh, let me go back here real quick. Where's my Where's my USGS map at? There we go. Uh, let's go ahead and look here. So that's today's events. This is the activity that kicked up back in, okay, yeah, it was back in December time, time frame, um, early December of last year. And uh, it was a pretty good cluster of quakes. So minus the one that you see here today, um, well, there's a couple uh, from today, one from today and one from earlier this year. Most of this activity, there's 40 earthquakes in this swarm that kicked up back in uh, early, again, early no, uh, December time frame last year. But it's, it was a little bit further south than the activity uh, we're kind of seeing today. You guys note that? seen this activity today a little bit more north and uh, within this region here of the Blanco fracture zone so watching that pretty closely you know when whenever we see that type of event um, this type of swarming along a plate boundary um, right next to a, uh, a major subduction zone there off the coast of uh, the west coast the Cascadia obviously um, definitely something to keep an eye on because in general <clears throat> check out the rest of the the pacific plate look at that super quiet 
throughout areas of the western portion of the Pacific Ring of Fire. And even just because we have one little earthquake here, this one was actually from uh, yesterday, by the way. So we can throw that one off the map because it's almost past the 24 hour period. That leaves the only activity along the Pacific Plate here uh, in this weak zone, so to speak, the fracture area, the Blanco fracture zone. So got to eh, definitely be on guard today, folks, for sure. Just in case, um, remember the Blanco Fracture Zone is a different setup. Obviously, it's a different setup in terms of um, uh, uh, well, you got the subduction zone over here. You got a different type of plate boundary here, as far as the fault system goes. I believe. Uh, let me see if I can bring up the. Uh, stand by for a second here. See if I can bring this up real quick and look at uh, a couple of the specific plates here and the direction that these guys are moving. Won't go fracture zone. Here's a couple different maps. Gorda plate. I believe, yeah, this, well, the thing is where these earthquakes are taking place is not in this. Uh, in this rift zone where, where the plates kind of separate but more so in here so technically we got one section of the plate moving it'd be towards the west because this one's kind of awkward they got north american plate here kind of on a at a weird angle so let's go back here we got this section of the plate moving uh to the northwest and the um Blanco fracture zone area heading down to the southeast so if anything I think that kind of adds further strain here in this region of the Cascadia if you really think about it you get these ridges building up here from that strain uh, increasing pressure down here along the southern end of the Cascadia so uh, it's something definitely something to watch for sure uh, let me go back to uh, today's events. I got quite a few windows open up here. I need to uh, uh, get rid of a few. But uh, yeah, but I'm telling you, aside from all the uh, activity there off the Oregon coast, look at the Pacific Plate. It's quiet. It's strangely quiet. And now we're getting a swarm here in this area. So be on guard, folks, for the potential of seeing something larger out here along the west coast. Uh, a little swarm out here as well in Iran. We got seven earthquakes uh, in the four to five range. Uh, looks like just offshore as well. The majority of it looks like it's just offshore. Largest one so far, a 5.5 earthquake. So, wow, a couple different swarming areas today. All right, let's go ahead and check out Puerto Rico. Uh, a couple small earthquakes. This one here is from yesterday near the, the uh, Dominican Republic. One earthquake up here recently around the Puerto Rico Trench. South America awfully quiet. Only a couple earthquakes there into, per into the uh, Peru-Chile Trench. And this activity is from yesterday as well. So you knock out a couple of these earthquakes and uh, that only leaves activity along the west coast with this swarm. So something, something stuck over here. Uh, kind of building up pressure, I believe, strongly um, because we're starting to see that major strain building up here on the eastern part of the Pacific Plate uh, with that swarming. So which one's going to go, west coast or the uh, um, western part of the Pacific Ring of Fire? Well, we'll have to keep an eye on that for sure. Uh, the rest of the states here, this is a 2.5 map and above. Looks like uh, we'll bring this down to the all magnitude. Some activity throughout Texas today. Uh, out there around Snyder, Texas, it looks like a 2.5 and a 3.0. Um, some spotty activity uh, up in Oklahoma. That looks like a query blast. One little earthquake here in the New Madrid zone. This one was from, uh, it looks like overnight, a little 1.9. Uh, but kind of the big story out here, folks. That's kind of a, well, look at this earthquake. <clears throat> this one here is, uh, 
a 2.1 into the Cascadia subduction zone mega thrust area. Now there's a couple different fault names here. They have all these fractured areas um, of unnamed faults and whatnot, but this whole area is the Cascadia. It stretches from Northern California up past the Vancouver Island ranges. This earthquake is 35 kilometers into the Cascadia. And it looks like, I wanna see if this is prior This, wow, okay, so this actually looks like this 2.1 struck prior to all this activity up here in the Blanco fracture zone. So either there's not enough built up pressure here to release the Cascadia, and it's still kind of uh, winding up, so to speak. We're getting that uh, the weaker spots back behind here along the Blanco fracture zone. But still, I think that's a very good indication here of some uh, tremendous pressure being built up along the Cascadia. That's, uh, that's down there, a 35 kilometer deep, 2.1. Gotta watch the, the uh, Cascadia today, I believe. We've been talking about it a lot. Um, and that would not be a good news uh, or a good scenario if that were to happen. Uh, it looks like a couple small microquakes throughout the um, Pacific Northwest. Let's go ahead and check out the trimmer map here. Um, stand by for a second. Checking out the trimmer. Uh, from yesterday, it showed none, zip zero. I do want to check out uh, Mount St. Helens here, seeing if any of these earthquakes are showing up on the seismographs off the coast there. Let's see, stand by for a second here, folks. Ooh, look at that one. What is that? That's a pretty sufficient S wave right there. Um, what are we missing? Where'd the big earthquake happen? Let's see here. Could it be the uh, activity offshore? Good possibility. Let me look around here, kind of looking. What are we missing? So in, in events like that, I kind of go over here and check out the UTC time. 5.6, that's almost a six pointer. That's a pretty good size one out there. Uh, this one was at 11.56 UTC time. So I'll go over here and check out 11.56. Yep, 11.56 UTC time right around here. So that, uh, yeah, that 5.6 showed up pretty nicely. And it looks like kind of like it was a long duration earthquake here. Um, wow. Uh, some movement following that 5.6 uh, there at uh, Mount St. Helens, a little microquake. Looks like another uh, earthquake there. A couple of them. It's, this map is definitely picking up some of the local uh, earthquakes offshore there. You can see quite a few of them. Not as strong as the 5.6, but they're there. Uh, and I believe those were those couple fours that were seen listed on uh, this map here. Man, gosh darn it. I'm one of those guys. Yes, I keep lots and lots of windows open. I know it's one of my downfalls, but uh, sometimes I utilize them, sometimes I don't. <laughs> oh, goodness. All right. So, yeah, we're going to watch it pretty closely, folks. Uh, it's something to watch. Obviously, we've got movement offshore. And for those that say this is not associated with the Cascadia, it is as a whole regional area. And I think when we got some movement here with the direction of the plates, we're adding further stress down here into the southern segment. Uh, that's why these ridges are kind of built up and and uh, that's why they say that sometimes the southern segment of the Cascadia will go uh, with an 8.0 or, or a little bit greater. Um, so it doesn't necessarily going to take the full rupture uh, to produce some havoc out here along the west coast. We could just see a partial rupture out here and that would be uh, not good. Not good at all. Um, yeah, so we'll, we'll watch it pretty closely today, folks, for sure. If anything pops up, I guess I'll know it because I kind of live right here. A lot of folks, a lot of viewers live up there in Oregon, Astoria, and uh, areas uh, around Northern California as well. So uh, what else we got for California? Notice the increase in movement, though, today in the Bay Area. This was pretty much absent yesterday. Um, San Francisco area along the San Andreas Fault seeing quite a few microquakes up and down the board and inland as well onto the Hayward Fault System and also the Calaveras Fault System over here to the east. Uh, both of these uh, are well 
Um, it's overdue, I guess, but is a word for a couple of these faults here. Uh, they do run through some highly populated regions, so i uh, got to watch that area as well. Uh, Eastern Sierra Nevada here definitely showing a little bit of increased movement today uh, as a sign of pressure from the uh, Pacific Plate and the North American Plate interaction uh, around Ridgecrest as well. Well, Low activity up here on the... Uh, which fault system is that? Uh, it's the San Jacinto Fault Zone. Looks like a one of these segments up here showing a little bit of swarming on it uh, near the Loma Linda area. Some uh, deeper earthquake movement there into the mountains. Quite a few swarming uh, microquakes there in that area today. Um, also further south here. Nothing major going on around the Salton Sea. We got one earthquake here that we've seen yesterday. Uh, or that's late last night, it looks like. A 1.2 popping up there uh, just west of the Salton Sea. So we got to watch this area pretty closely, folks. I mean, uh, with everything else quiet as can be, this here looks like it could be set to go. Uh, so we will watch it. Uh, Yellowstone National Park, far as the earthquake activity goes, looks like the swarm has died off. Not seeing any earthquake activity is at all. Uh, 11.56, that's going to be the 5.6 that struck off the uh, coast there into the Blanco Fracture Zone. Showed it pretty nicely on the um, Yellowstone Station. So anyway, um, solar weather activity is still kind of uh, ramping up. We're waiting on some potential flaring. Uh, we do have um, some KP indexes coming in high right now. We did reach a 5 index. Uh, earlier looks like it's starting to uh, mellow out a little bit uh, but still kind of elevated we'll see how this plays out throughout the day today uh, sunspot activity is gaining strength and uh, looks like we could be facing a, a pretty good in flare here pretty soon possibly of an of an X flare from these sunspots which are growing rapidly and turning into view so uh, it's getting a very very active here on the Sun so all right, guys, I'm going to bounce out of here. Um, I do have I do have a Petrolia California station up, a seismograph station. Now, I didn't see the earthquake when it came in um, earlier uh, on the seismograph, but uh, that's a station to watch for any activity around Northern California. Uh, it's going to be not this one. This one's Solomon Islands, but this one right below here, Petrolia California. That's just south of Eureka. And I have that station specifically up for monitoring the uh, uh, activity along the Cascadia, at least the southern end. So, uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes, folks. Stay safe out there and um, watching this event activity pretty closely. Looks like a couple fours down there that the uh, EMSE is reporting here on the globe there in uh, the Baja California region. You guys see that? All that activity striking looks like afterwards uh, after the um, events offshore of the uh, Oregon region so either way just definitely a sign of uh, some major buildup and and uh, possibly some larger scale movement here pretty soon in this area uh, so that includes the West Coast folks and the Cascadia so stay safe out there we will chat you guys a little bit later on unless something major happens be prepared folks